Hey there, welcome to our wetlands classroom and our next segment in our wetlands 101 series where today we'll explore wetlands restoration. In this two-part series, you're going to learn about the issues facing wetlands today. Delaware's lost more than half of its original wetlands. Wetlands can be impaired or damaged by many different activities, including the introduction of invasive species, ditching to drain wetlands, channelizing streams, and a lack of vegetative buffer surrounding wetlands to protect them. Nowadays, we understand and value wetlands much better, and we're looking to repair past damages through wetlands restoration. Wetlands restoration can bring back those valuable services that wetlands provide to us naturally every day. So let's go check with Brittany and we'll learn about one of Delaware's most prominent invasive species. Come along. The most common invasive plant found in Delaware is the common reed or Phragmites australis. It's also called Phragmites or Phrag for short. It was introduced to the U.S. in the 1800s from Asia and currently resides in the lower 48 states. It can be found in both tidal and non-tidal wetlands. The reason why Phragmites is so widespread is it grows very quickly and forms thick root mats that outcompete native plants. And the animals that depend on those native plants for food and shelter have to look elsewhere. There are multiple ways to remove Phragmites from your property, and they include burning and spraying with herbicides. There's a team of specialized biologists at DENREC who work to remove Phragmites from large areas. If you are a property owner and have five or more acres of Phragmites on your property and are looking for assistance, please contact the Delaware Phragmites Cost Share Program. Thanks, Brittany. Ditching and draining wetlands is one of the human activities that has the most impact on wetland health. Historically, lands that were deemed too wet to develop or successfully farmed were ditched and drained with the purpose of making drier lands. The problem is once these lands have been drained of water, they're no longer functioning as a wetland. Ditches prevent water from soaking in and being released slowly after storm events. They cause water to be funneled quickly downstream, causing flooding and impacting human health and safety. They also prevent water from creating a wetland habitat and serving as important habitat for fish and wildlife. And lastly, when water is funneled quickly from the site, it no longer has a chance to soak into the ground and replenish our groundwater and sources of drinking water. Floodplain or riverine wetlands occur alongside streams and rivers and receive their water from precipitation or from when stormwater spills over the bank. In some cases, streams are dug out and straightened or channelized to funnel water off the landscape faster. Materials dug out are usually placed alongside in spoil piles. When a natural forested stream is channelized, floodwaters after a storm cannot overflow into the adjacent wetland and the floodplain wetland has lost its connection with the stream. A drained and dry wetland can no longer support wetland plants or animals, and this is a loss of food and habitat. If you have ditches or channelized streams on your property and you're interested in restoring them into a thriving wetland community, please contact Denrex Stormwater and Drainage Section. In Delaware, most of our agricultural fields and development are close to wetlands. One of the challenges we face today is how to maintain healthy wetland communities alongside other land uses. Buffers are transition areas between wetlands and an upland area. You can uh, have many different uh, buffers, whether it's a thin uh, grassy strip up to a thick forested buffer. When development occurs close to a wetland and vegetative buffers are not left intact, Loosened soils, nutrients, and other contaminants can run off directly into wetland habitats, choking out native plants, killing fish, and changing how much and how long wetlands can hold water. A properly installed and maintained buffer can reduce nutrient and pesticide runoff by nearly 50% and sediment loss by nearly 75%. Buffers also provide vital habitat for animals that live and breed in forested ponds, such as frogs and salamanders. Without buffer habitat, these rare and unique species would not persist. For larger animals, vegetated buffers along streams and rivers provide protected travel corridors that allow pockets of populations to move around and expand. For more information about buffers and their benefits, please visit our website. Well, that's it for part one. We hope you enjoy learning about how wetlands can be damaged and the importance of wetlands restoration. Join us in part two, where you'll get to see some real wetlands restoration projects on the ground and you also get some information and advice on funding wetlands restoration on your property. Thanks for dropping by. See you next time.